Hello. I hope all of you can uh, hear me. So let us uh, start this webinar. Uh, so I'm going to mute you all right now. If you have any questions later, you can unmute and ask uh, the questions. So at the moment, I'm muting you. So uh, let's start the webinar. Uh, so we will focus on how to build a career in structures as we had uh, discussed earlier. The main thing is in this webinar, we have a mix of people. We have few students, we have a few teachers, we have a few senior engineers who want to shift the career into structures and so on. So uh, uh, I'll be talking a few things which suits all of you and uh, mostly but i'll be concentrating on freshers because the most number of students who join here are uh, freshers or who are just at the start of the career all right so i will first speak what i intend to speak speak to you and then you can ask me questions or doubts that you you might have regarding the career all right so i welcome you let us start I'm just stopping my video so that I can share my screen and uh, show you whatever I want to. All right, so hope all of you can see the screen. If not, uh, you can uh, pick up the phone and tell me that you are not able to see that. I have unmuted you, but then I have uh, given a provision to speak in case if you want to so i hope you can see my screen so first i will give you a quick brief about me i'm a consultant uh, you can have a look at my linkedin profile if you want to have an information about uh, what i've been doing and what is my expertise and all that so uh, i have about 20 years of experience in building sector uh, and I have been practicing as a consultant and of late I have been doing a lot of uh, training as well. So uh, you can look at this link uh, and uh, in LinkedIn you will find me as Premjit Vasudevan and you can have a look at my profile. And uh, coming to today's webinar. How do we successfully build a career in structures? So that is our goal today to understand that. And I will probably explain a few things which I might have done in my career as well. So what do you mean by success? So where you want to reach depends on your understanding of success. For some, it may be money. For some, it may be a career. For some, it may be both. For some, it may be something much more than that. So it all depends on what is the definition of success. Yeah. So is it getting a job in structures? Yes, that is the first step for your success because you are all aspiring to be structural engineers. So of course, that needs to be a priority. some people will want to be very ethical and do the correct design so is that something what you want to do or do something and be a structural engineer so all these decides where you will work what you will do how your career will progress and things like that yeah so there are many consultants who are ethically very right and equal numbers are ethically really wrong and there's something to survive or something to complete the project so it all depends on what you want to do what you want to become what you should be known for do you want to do economic design and in that process do you want to also adhere to correct design all this decides if you are really a structural engineer if you are really successful all that now becoming an independent consultant 
that also will be your motto and that also defines your success yep and at times as a beginner maybe knowing the limitation and seeking help is also your success yeah everyone will not know everything especially at the start of the career so it's very important to understand what you don't know what is your limitation and striving to achieve that knowledge or to reach there and seeking the right help from the right people and progressing that's very important for your quick success so you have to mix all this and many more things i'm telling you a few things based on my experience and based on my uh, understanding of what is going through a young engineer's mind so all these are going to define your success so you have to concentrate on each and every aspect of this there are much more than this but these are very essential now pertaining to job cover gaps in education now first thing is you have to realize that there is a huge gap in education and practice I will, I will cover some of the things right now in another five minutes i will explain you what are the kind of gaps that i'm talking about now your productivity and usability your work should be useful yeah that's what a consultant when you are being interviewed looks at it's not about if you know etabs it's not about if you know certain other things it's not about if you slog 24 hours yes that many things will matter but in the end are you a total engineer a complete engineer who is useful who is productive who can be useful for the organization so there are a lot of parameters that will be eval uh, evaluated here when you are attending an interview yeah your attitude the way you can approach the ability to approach to a problem your communication skills so all these are directly linked to your productivity or usability yeah usability as in usefulness i should say i should change the word it's the usefulness yeah say sometimes you may be a big zero in uh, say uh, installing a software or uh, uh, using a right coordination tool right now we need a lot of coordination especially in the covid time so if you are not really knowing what to do then maybe you are not really useful because people want people who are less troublesome to them yeah so these kind of basic things like installing a software uh, looking for the right tool for coordination sketching things like that it's all expected that a people of your age and experience even if you are a new uh, in the field should be aware of it that's an expectation of a organization so that defines so that also decides if you are going to get a job i already mentioned communication skills asking the right questions to the clients all these are very important software skills yes that's also important right skills at the right software so we'll discuss one by one connecting to the right people might sometimes help you to get a job and presenting your skills in the right way is very much important as well so let us quickly look into some of the aspects so when i say cover gaps in education what are the kind of gaps that i'm talking about so i'll give you a quick glimpse of some of the things that a young structural engineer aspiring structural engineer might miss to understand so i will tell you i will just show you what are these gaps that i'm talking about Say you have a mid-rise building and say it's in Bangalore. Yeah. My question is, will you recommend a mix of M20, M25, M30 or M40 or something else? Now, how do you decide this? Is First thing is, is it your decision? Is it a structural engineer's decision? many feel it's not some feels it is yeah so how do you decide this 
it's a mid-rise building, say six floor building. So what mix would you need? Anyone? How do you decide that? Yep. It's so, all about pardon me? A design. Uh, 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 yeah, so there are a lot of uh, uh, reasons or a lot of things that you need to look into before deciding a mix. You cannot just say that it's M20, M25 or M30. Now at the end of a BTEC or a B, you should be in a position to answer this. Yeah, there are two criteria. One is the strength criteria and one is the durability criteria, but which plays dominant role. Yeah, it depends on certain things. So you should be in a position to answer if someone asks you. Yeah. Now, I'm not giving you an answer today, but if you are finding it difficult to uh, understand the or come up with an answer, ask me later. I will be happy to answer for you. Same way, this is a small model that I have made. Forget about the roof and all that. Question is, will you fix or pin the base? Now, if you remember your theory of structures, uh, you might have learned many frame analysis, but some frames had a fixed base, some frames had a pinned base. Now, when will you use pinned? When will you use fixed? Or is there anything better than that? Yeah, so these are the kind of gaps I'm talking about. Now, when you enter into a company and when you start asking these basic questions to a senior, yeah, well and good, they will help you out. But then if you are someone who already knows all this, that makes a huge difference in your selection as well as in your appraisal and various other things. So these are the things that you need to concentrate. You need to fill that gap between education and... Badresh, can you please mute your mic? A lot, lot of difference. Badresh. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Please mute your mic. When you are needing to speak something, you can unmute. So, Hello. Yeah. Chinmay, you can ask me doubts later at the end of the uh, uh, session. No, sir, you asked the question. I was trying to answer that. Yeah, tell me. Sir, I think uh, when the founder space in our foundation is limited, so at that time we cannot uh, uh, that at that time we cannot fix the base. Uh, we cannot fix the base, so we that time we have to pin the foundation. Uh, like pin supports, we have to provide. Because if we provide fixed support, then moment will also come on the footing. So moment will generate and that will require more area. No, it's not about we deciding what. It's about what's really happening. We need to incorporate in the model. So it's that way, right? It's not that we decide what needs to be, uh, how the structure should behave. A part of it, we can do it. But then most of it, it's the other way. How the structure behaves, that way we have to model it, right? Anyway, I will explain it later. And Chinmay, I think you have taken our course. So uh, it's already explained in one of the chapters. I think you are only reaching there. So don't worry. You will get the answer for that. But what you said is only partially right, not complete. Yeah. Same way. Say you have a small building, say maybe one or two floors. Oh, now, should that be a lot bearing structure or a frame structure? Now, as a beginner, you might think that, okay, I've not worked on projects. I will learn this in projects. So that's not the expectation of a consultant anymore because there are students who are able to answer that. There are students who are able to uh, decide if a structure needs to be framed or masonry based on whatever conditions. Yeah, so based on soil conditions, based on the openness of the structure, you should be able to decide if you need a frame structure or a masonry structure. Now, if you are not in that level of expertise to decide these, it's it's time that you look into it because when you are being interviewed, people will expect, surely because there are a lot of talent and a lot of people available now for hiring. So people will look for the best of the best. So if you are struggling to take decisions of this kind, it's high time that you understand the need and uh, uh, work towards it, work on projects and understand these kind of things. 
No, there are more questions. These questions are from my students and from uh, youngsters who ask me or communicate with me very often. So this is a four to five floor building or a three floor building. Do we need a shear wall in this building? How do you, how do I know? Is it based on number of floors that I need to decide shear wall? Or is it that even three floor building might need a shear wall? How do I decide that? What do you mean by a braced column? What do you mean by an unbraced column? Many times your textbook tells you design a column with an axial load of 1000 kilonewton and the column is braced and in double curvature, things like that. Now, how do you know if the column is braced? The textbook doesn't tell you that. How do you know if the column is in double curvature or single? How do you know that? The textbook seldom tells that. So these are the kind of things that you need to focus. Now many feel that if the building is three floor, wind analysis is not needed. I don't know from where people come up with that. These are frequently asked questions by students. Someone told me, my teacher told me that if the building is only three floors, I don't need to do a wind analysis. Yeah, is that true? Okay, so these are the things that you need to find answers to. There are many more. I'm just giving you a few examples. Now, a few more examples I will tell you. You can get into my uh, website. It's civilera.com. And if you go to blog, I might have given a bit more blogs where some of the questions are very relevant. So if you look at, yeah, something like this. Say the architect wants a sleeve in your beam, an opening, yeah? He want to, the services team wants to run a pipe through your beam. So do you allow this? Yeah. So if you are allowing which of this you will allow these kind of technical questions, you should be able to take decisions at your level. This is not a rocket science. It's from the basics. Yeah. So these are the things that you need to focus on for bagging that job. Not only for bagging that job, it's technically very much significant and you need to know about all this. Yeah. So you can read through this and understand what it is all about. Yeah. So go to civilera.com and click on blog. You will get a lot of blogs which I've written there, which might be useful. Some of you might have been following me. So you might have already read that well and good. Doesn't uh, matter to them. Now, how does communication becomes important in this era? I need not tell you that many of the good offices, they have multidisciplinary projects. There will be different stakeholders involved in a project. Yeah, there will be architects, there will be services, you know that in larger projects and many offices like Atkins or Arcadis or any multinational companies, they work in multi-region. You might be doing a Middle East based projects from India, their culture, their way of working, their communication skills, everything will be different and you will have a challenge. So you need to know how to communicate well in terms of language, in terms of sketches, in terms of reading the drawing, in terms of conveying your understanding everything. So con communicating in the sense, the entire project based communication is what I'm talking about, not just your language. Yes, that's very much important. Apart from that, the way you communicate your drawings, the sketches, the doubts. Yeah. So most of the times, if you are involved in multi-region coordination, it's always good. You pick up a tool that allows you to sketch and then sketch up your uh, question and send back rather than just asking by email. So all these are going to contribute to your uh, productivity or your effectiveness or usefulness. Yeah. So somebody should not be sending you back and forth emails. Your communication should be crystal clear. If you're, if a client doesn't communicate the real uh, requirement, you should be in a position to ask that. So all this knowledge is important. If somebody tells you, uh, uh, I don't have a soil report because I don't have a soil consultant in my area. So you should be in a position to find out someone from that place and give him the address and then ask him to get it done. So things like that. So there are a lot of things like that, which you need to 
understand right questions to clients you need information many times architect will sketch up something and give you and say that this is what i want but then if you don't ask the right questions then you will be in trouble later the kind of wall thicknesses yeah he might have shown glass but he has a good idea that tomorrow it's going to be chained to a wall so you should ask him up front that are you sure that this is going to be the load or something else so these kind of questions so to ask the right questions you should have the right experience otherwise you will have to always rely on seniors type something and then ask him okay is this fine so your effectiveness or your usefulness comes into picture when you have already gone through the cycle of uh, coordination when you have done a project and you know that this is what the general load in a building is and if there is any deviation these are the kind of things that i need to ask the client yeah so this right questions to clients can come only with experience and as a beginner you don't say that i'm a beginner so i don't know that because at the end of a b or even or at least after m tech you are supposed to know what are the 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 cycle the design cycle of a building if not it's high time that you look into that yeah because there are students there are people there are a lot of students who are already in that level and who are ready to back that first opportunity that might come tomorrow yeah so if you are not in that level it's high time mm -hmm. you experience a project life cycle now many ask me what are the right softwares that i need to master there are hundreds and thousands of software available now, if you start learning each and everything, there will be only time for that. So in building sector, if you are wanting to be in building design sector, probably these are the only software that you might need. There might be changes in software based on the office, the location, the country where you are in and things like that. But let me tell you that software is only one part of your knowledge and how to use a software depends on not only on the software interface but also on your knowledge on structures so the knowledge in structures or the basics or this project experience is what matters more than a software you can always tweak your software knowledge based on the requirement if you don't know stat today it's it's not a big deal to learn stat but how to use stat appropriate to what you know is what is more important yeah so if you are in india if you are in middle east if you are in Singapore, if you are in the US probably, and if you are into concrete building structures, probably these are the only thing that you might need. You might need ETAPs. You might need STAD as an alternative in some offices. STAD is used even now, but I would say if you are working in a, or planning to work in modern companies into buildings, probably ETAPS is enough, STAD might not be needed, but then it's more of a generic software. So you can quickly model, say if you want to model a, a, a retaining wall or a water tank and then quickly check something, STAD allows you a bit versatility, but for a building structure, nothing can be ETAPS at the moment. Yeah, so ETAPS is one of the sort out software which you need to master and how to use it in the right way. Yeah, just learning somewhere might not help you. There are a lot of things that you need to focus on that. When to use a shell, when to use a membrane, when will you pin, when will you fix? All these are more important than knowing the software as such. How ETAPS evaluate the effective length of a column. How does ETAPS tackle slenderness? How does ETAPS tackle eccentricity? These are the kind of things that you need to know because there are certain tweaks that you need to do if you are relying on ETAPS for design. Yeah, if you don't know that, you may end up saying that, okay, I'm seeing less steel in beams compared to STAD. I'm seeing a bit more steel in columns compared to STAD. All these are because your parameters or your understanding is not right. Yeah, any software will be as good as your knowledge and the way you are giving the parameters and you are understanding the parameters yeah stat and etaps are equally good but it has certain limitations on uh, allowing you to design or uh, define the parameters so in that matter etap scores much better it understands a uh, uh, engineer's need and uh, it is uh, uh, made in that manner stats weakness is covered in etaps it's like that then probably safe again safe many people misunderstand safe as a completely different software when it comes to etaps 
let me tell you that if you don't know safe, even then you can do things using ETABs. Foundations and slabs can be done in ETABs with the same accuracy as safe. Safe is a similar product to ETABs, but focusing on flows and uh, uh, foundations from the same company, CSI. And the advanced version of ETABs has most of the safe features in that only a modeling interface, there will be slight changes. So even if you don't know SAFE, it doesn't matter. SAFE and ETABs are very similar when it comes to foundation modeling and analysis and design. There is no much difference between the results either. Both are on the same engine, both are on the same principle. So there is hardly much difference. Even SAFE, you can, instead of SAFE, you can model in ETABs itself. Now, having foundations model in ETAPS has an advantage over SAFE in that if you want, you can model the foundation in the parent model itself if you use ETAPS. Whereas in SAFE, the advantage is that you have much more flexible modeling options than ETAPS. But when it comes to result interpretation or the accuracy, both are same. So 90% ETAPS and SAFE will be similar. Now, Revit and CAD, it depends on uh, your interest in building information modeling and your company where you might be working or if you are doing on your own, if you want to have a building information modeling experience and if you want to have a 3D drawings produced and all that. Now, many people misunderstand Revit as an architectural tool. It's not just an architectural tool. It's a complete building information modeling. Now, if you want to understand what is building information modeling and what is the difference between BIM and Revit. I have written a blog again, or you can contact me after the webinar if you are keen on understanding that more, I will let you know. But Revit is going to be a future. Revit is going to be the future of drawing production and coordination, especially when we are going to have difficult times like this when we can only work remotely. Revit allows you to reduce the kind of abortive works and it also helps you to uh, coordinate more effectively. Many people think that it's a drawing tool. It's not just a drawing tool. Many think that it is an architectural uh, rendering tool. It is, but it is much more than that. Even a structural engineer can use Revit. Like a CAD can be used by an architect, like a CAD can be used by an electrical engineer. Revit can be used by different disciplines in their own way. The basics remain same, but how you use it depends on if you are a structural engineer, if you are a um, architect, or if you are a MEP engineer. And much more than drawing production, of course, it can produce drawings. It can even produce structural detailing. In addition to that, it's much more powerful when you use the coordination aspects. So with these software, you can mostly do your job. A building structure you can design. You can go with ETABS, ETABS Foundation, and Revit. These three softwares is generally enough. STAD as an additional backup in case of a government organization of a, or a very old consultancy, people might be still using STAD. Then you can get a bit of STAD knowledge, but a modern company generally uses ETABS at the moment. Now, there are many more softwares like SAP, you have SIPCAD, there are unlimited number of, there is Robot, which is an, which is again a, a Autodesk product, but it's not at all used in India, but it's very much used in the UK, Robot it is called, and it's very much compatible with Revit. So there are hundreds of software. So it depends on your company and most of the companies currently in India uses ETAPS when it comes to building structures and some of the old companies use a STAD, but it's high time people understand the potential of ETABs and migrate from STAD to ETABs. That's my personal opinion. Somebody else might have a different opinion. I've been using STAD for a long, long time till 2007 or six, and then I migrated to ETABs. Then I have never gone back to STAD for even a minor thing. So that's my personal opinion. Now, many feel confused. This is especially for a beginner. Uh, uh, many, many um, institutes offer courses and then come up with 3ds Max, SketchUp, and five courses in a package and all that. You should never fall to that kind of things. 3ds Max and SketchUp, they are completely purely visualization tools. It has nothing to do with uh, structures. 
yeah you will never use if you are planning to be a structural engineer it is very very un, uh, unlikely that you are going to use uh, this particular tools these kind of tools so choose your courses wisely because you will end up in a mess after learning this if you are not sound in architectural related stuff so you will never be able to use the software in your life if you are not good at visualization and uh, in architecture yeah and connecting to the right people helps you so i advise you leverage in linkedin and quora they are one of the two of the leading platforms for tech people yeah so use it to your advantage and when i say leverage in linkedin and quora right, it's not just that you post something and uh, or just be there nobody is going to notice you until and unless you are loud yeah and you should be pleasantly loud you should be technically loud not simply loud yeah so you have to participate in discussions yeah until and unless you do that your seniors will never take a note of you it's all about marketing your skills in the right way yeah it's a it's a market it's a kind of marketing it's not that uh, you be in linkedin create your profile and then connect to people who are experts who are experienced who are employers and then just keep quiet they don't know you because they might have thousand plus people in their network they are not going to check every day their network who are there in their list it's when you reciprocate or when you when you not reciprocate when you uh, uh, comment or participate in the discussions what they are doing that they take a note so if someone ask a question on linkedin participate in that even if you don't know you try to find out the answer and then uh, give a comment or if someone posts for a help offer a help that you can yeah so you should be visible in these media it's not enough if you just create a profile and as i said it should be a pleasant visibility not that you are distracting people you are irritating people or you are showing your attitude or you are commenting always negative about others that's not the way that will give you a very negative uh, impression and that will affect your career path as well attend webinars like this there are many webinars coming up it will help you to understand uh, say even if it's of other disciplines say if it's on automation if it's on mep if it's on construction methods and technology please attend that because being a structural engineer doesn't mean that you have to be only in office and then uh, look into modeling it adds revit only, not not only that if you understand the requirement of an architect better if you understand the requirement of an mep uh, engineers requirement better you can always add value into your design yes narasapa raised your hand what is that you wanted to ask hello i think you accidentally uh, raised your hand okay i will continue so these are all very important as a fresher don't wait for getting a job don't wait for being a 10 years experience or a five years experience to start doing all this yeah because the rate of your learning is going to decide when you are going to become independent that's very important yeah and helping others will always come back don't expect that it comes back but it will come back so if someone is struggling with some help and you know where to get that help or you know that help them helping others are going to always be like helping yourself it will be a satisfaction for you it will be a help for others and you will get the result one or the other way yeah so connecting to the right people in the right way now presenting your skills in the right way it's very 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 important yeah so as a youngster i'm considering most of the participants here are youngsters uh, so I'm, I'm i'm talking for them not for any experienced people so if you are presenting your skills the first thing that you are presenting to someone is your resume your cv yeah now I suggest if you are a beginner or a one year experienced, 
at the best have one page and clutter free cv nothing more than that maybe two pages if you have something more to showcase but nothing more than that yeah i will, I will show you one one cv and then discuss um, about that do you find this interesting or do you want me to skip this and go uh, uh, forward somebody if you feel that is not required please tell me that and we can skip this portion and then go ahead no no it's interesting no yes, sir it's good sir please continue all right okay so one page clutter free now what do i mean by that i'll, I'll be telling you that no personal information needed until and unless asked. Yeah. No declaration, self-declaration. I hereby declare that I will do the job as you say, blah, 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 not needed. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Include projects that you have done in your CV. Even if it is something like you have been to site and inspected 100 buildings or 10 buildings, and if you are trying to get into a structural job, never mind, please include that. And no lies in your CV, never ever lie in your CV, but you are allowed to hide your weakness. Yep, I will explain what I mean by that. And use the resume. Now, how do you use that? All this I'm going to tell you right now. So let me first show you one example CV. You can see right now. You can see right, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Now this is a CV that I really got from a student. Yeah, from a lady. Now I have removed the name, everything. Uh, so you can see here. She's writing. It's a resume. Then uh, the full address, including the uh, street address, email, mobile number, everything is written here. Then something like career objective to contribute, my intellectual, analytical, creative abilities and taking up responsibility for collective growth and development of the organization. So this is a very long sentence with no, I, I was not able to understand what she meant. Uh, so it, it is a very large sentence without any meaning and she's trying to say that she will take up the responsibility. Yeah. Now, this is not your career objective. This is not something that you should write here, something copying from another CV or putting it here. I'll tell you what needs to be done. The problem here is, see, uh, any uh, HR in a large organization probably will spend hardly one minute on your CV, not more than that, because they may be getting hundreds of CVs per day. Yeah, so they are not going to elaborately see each and everything that you have written. They may scroll like this and then see a few things. Now, if you look at this CV, first thing is it's a three page CV or a four page CV. And in the fourth page, you have only a place mentioned here. It's all badly done. Yeah. And wherever you scroll and go there is nothing much great see you go here puc 50 person you come here uh participated in a high corn water workshop okay fine that is everyone does something like that key strength i'm good mathematical analysis of the things what it's a very poor english good leadership qualities these are things which others should tell about you know that you are declaring it up front that i have multitasking ability so rather than writing strength you have to demonstrate it with an example what is the proof that you are you are good at multitasking what is the proof that you are dedicated you should showcase that with an example which you have already done say if you have already been a, a volunteer for a seminar in your college Declare that rather than saying key strength, a title, and then explaining this. That doesn't give you any credibility. What is the proof that you have, you are able? There is no proof. You are only declaring, right? So that's only having a face value. It doesn't have a, a proof for that. Yeah, hobbies, watching TV, drawing, teaching, reading books and novels. What kind of books? There is no need of these kind of hobbies which are not relevant. It's only consuming the space. 
yeah and here if you see um, she's writing her nationality her gender her marital status date of birth if i get pan number i can do <laughs> a hacker can do something so no need of any kind of uh, personal profile like that yeah permanent address again giving here once it's done there so it's all uh, uh, wasting space yeah and the time of the person who is reading that and then a declaration saying that i hereby declare that all the statements furnished above are true correct and complete there is no meaning in this because if you are genuine you are always declaring the right thing so why a separate declaration like that and there is no signature anyways and this doesn't have any legal value and nobody has asked you for doing this yeah so if anyone wants you to give a bond or something like that bond is again uh, not legally valid but still if someone asks you to sign off they will give you a separate um, uh, letter or something which you may have to sign off and then agree that you will work there for a few years things like that so there is no meaning in signing in your or putting a declaration in your cv like this it only uh, uh, waste um, time and energy nothing nothing it does for you yeah so if you scroll here there is nothing much if you come here bachelor of engineering civil uh, institute of some institute of technology and then if you look at the marks it's 54 percent so it doesn't have any credibility so what i would say is uh, the student may be really good i'm not saying that okay 54 percentage is really poor no question about that but there might be some reason that she scored less and she might have made up later uh, by studying better we never know so in your cv never display your weakness so don't write 54 percent if you have 54 percent just delete this column so that that's not there you are not lying but if you write here 60 percent then you are lying that i said don't lie but you can hide your weakness definitely there is no problem yeah if you are called for the interview by doing that by hiding your weakness you are giving yourself a chance to be called on for the interview and if in the interview if you are able to uh, perform maybe they will not look at this marks at all they may ask you even if you say 54 percent maybe if you have performed really well in the interview you get a chance to um, work so increase your chance of getting hired by doing this say sometimes you might have a gap in your education sometimes you did your b in 2016 you one year you didn't do much then you went for your m tech something like that yeah so if you have a career break you can hide that if someone is interested to know that they will definitely ask you and 99 percentage of your employees are not worried if you have a gap but if they see a gap in the cv the chances that they may not call you is more but once they understand you they may not be having a problem uh, when they understand that you are capable they may not have a problem if you have a uh, break in your career so by doing that by hiding your weakness you are increasing the chance that you get that call yeah then depends on your interview and what you do there yeah so i'm not saying that you give false information i have told you very clearly no false information but you can hide or tweak things to suit which is harmless yeah which you think is going to increase your chance of getting that call and being there yeah and no need of writing uh, things like vtu because everywhere in karnataka 90 percentage or 95 percentage of your colleges are affiliated to vtu so why you waste uh, a column here or uh, make somebody spend uh, time reading this instead you make them read something relevant yeah so that your chance for that interview goes up so i would say remove all this and present something like this yeah so this is a one page cv for a fresher there is nothing more there is nothing less so whoever reads this whatever they scroll they will see something good yeah so i'm advising you to write a title here first thing is don't give a lot of uh, 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 headline like resume or cv or whatever it's not needed quickly write your name and your email and mobile number that's all you need 
then you give an idea on what you have been doing. So postgraduate in structural engineering with distinction. Now, if you don't have a postgraduate degree, don't worry. You just write a structural engineer with distinction or whatever. Have six months experience in analysis and design of seismic resistant buildings. Made extensive studies in torsion. So here, what you are doing is you are declaring or you are showcasing that you have done something. Yeah. Rather than writing what you want to do, what you are writing is what you have done. So that gives you more credibility that interests people rather than uh, stating your ambitions. Being ambitious is right, but this is not the place to be showcasing your ambitions. Yeah, that you can discuss uh, uh, during the interview or once you are at job. Here, what you need is proof, demonstration that you are capable. Yeah, summary of achievement. So write even a little uh, uh, achievement that you have, topper or participated in national level seminar. If you are a fresher, the kind of achievements you might have may be lesser. But if you have completed a complete project for someone, say you work part-time part for a consultant, you can state that as an achievement. Yeah, it's not that only awards and medals are an achievement. If you, if you think that you have completed a project on your own, that can be an achievement for you. Yeah, so wisely choose your achievements, skill profile, always use a bullet point so that people observe that and don't waste time uh, uh, looking for that. Yeah, and if you have some experience, write that in bullet points. Your qualifications, I don't think you need this column here, board or university is not needed. Even the year of pass is not really needed. Percentage is needed if you have a good percent. If you don't have a really good marks, you can hide that. Yeah. And your project works. And if you have done a project completely different off topic from building or construction, if you have done something in um, uh, environmental engineering or something else, maybe you need not showcase that here. You can skip that. And if you have some registrations or membership in uh, IEI or any consulting bodies, you can showcase that. So these are all going to convey that you are proactive, you are up to date, things like that. Yeah, so this is something you need to keep in mind that probably when you are sending your CV, it's hardly one minute that a person might see your CV. So it should be full of things that will bring in his attention. And one more point, very important point, this CV is also going to help you during interviews, not just for that first call. That is one help that you will get from a good, beautifully structured CV. In addition to that, what you are going to get is during interview. See, I have made a bold statement here. Postgraduate in structural engineering, have six months experience, made extensive studies in torsion in beam, and difference between sway and no sway frames. So now, when I make this statement, as a junior, as a beginner, definitely someone senior seeing this will be tempted to ask you about this. Yeah. Okay, this guy is quite young and he's saying that he knows everything about torsion in beam. Let me see what he knows about that. So difference between sway and no sway frames. So the chances that you will be able to answer that is more because you are already prepared with this. If you are not prepared, then you are going to uh, suffer. But then when you write something like this, I expect you to be a master in that. So you should be able to tell conclusively what is torsion, how is torsion coming in a beam, how you can tackle that in a manual design, how you can tackle that in an E-types design, what is the difference between torsion when you do manually and when you release yeah is there a difference so these kind of things you should be a master of and should be able to convey that in a right manner so you should practice your own also to answer that when someone asks you you can carry codes you can carry books you can refer you can show them closes no problem in that that only will add your credibility or add the feeling that you have gone through that yeah and if you fail to answer something which you have shown in your cv then you will it will be a backfiring for you. You will not get selected as well. So uh, by doing this, by including a lot of uh, uh, key words and key things like this, say uh, I have mentioned that 
learn structural design of building in real project yeah so people will ask you what project what explain what was the different things like that yeah seismic engineering i have mentioned some words so they might ask you about that so you should be prepared to answer that now if you do that what you are doing is you are bypassing some stock questions from the interviewer otherwise if you had not written this he might have asked you what do you mean by w reinforced section what do you mean by um, uh, something like that yeah which you may know or which you may not know but by doing this you are avoiding some stock questions from the interviewer yeah so by that you are making him ask what you want to answer at least in some places in some times it will work i'm not saying that everywhere it will work it all depends on your luck your interviewers mood and various other factors but by doing this at least you can force someone to ask what you want to answer yeah so this will increase the chances that you are getting selected so these are all some tips uh, which i wanted to pass to you based on my own experience my colleagues experience i have been in hiring positions in many companies so i know how it works so that's why i'm telling you it's very important it looks it's a very little thing but a few people does that try doing that and see how it makes a difference but as i said if you are technically unsound and if you do whatever there is no use of that yeah i'm only talking about the narrowing down of your competition when to like like students are there in the interview somebody who has done this will definitely win the uh, interview yeah so that's my point so first you have to make your basics right now coming back quickly we have limited time we have another uh, half an hour or so so let us quickly finish this off now your productivity i already told you that you have to be very useful at work you should be able to take decisions appropriate to your um, experience yeah every day if you nag your senior for a load calculation sir i don't know how to calculate the load in a stair yeah how do you calculate load of steps in a stair things like that i'm just quoting an example yeah all these are important because this is what is going to define you in work at work this may help somebody who already started working for their appraisal and things like that yeah or somebody who wants to shift your career say the same company is offering you a job in another discipline you want to switch departments so all this will matter in such cases so keep a high rate of learning don't cheap jobs for change jobs for silly reasons saying that my salary is less my boss called at me my home is far these are not reasons to change the job right now don't look at the pay for three years keep doing projects yeah so this will make you perfect and i'm telling you the problem with changing jobs very frequent is going to be a big problem it's not as simple as you think because you are breaking a continuity of a project everywhere say i worked five years five years one year in five companies what happens is you have missed experiencing the complete project cycle you know to design foundation in the first company you did uh, say uh, some modeling and studies of drawing in the second company they had a different system of working they put you through revit so you learned revit in the third company you design some beams yeah one year is not good enough in any company to understand and appreciate the entire process yeah so change a job only if you have serious issues in that company if your experience is good if you are getting if you are learning new things every day don't change for at least two to three years yeah there might be a better company that is offering you a job but then you should be very sure that that company is much much better and then you are going to settle there for a few years otherwise don't change it doesn't make sense at all again from my experience and from my colleagues experience and whatever i have seen i'm telling you that and it's very important many might have told you i don't know to what seriousness you have taken that but it's very serious otherwise you will take that many number of years to become independent yeah your rate of learning drops when you change your job that frequently now in case if you are in a wrong place it doesn't matter then you have to change there is no question about that i am not talking about that okay and pay it depends on 
people to people because some people might really need money. So I don't have an, uh, anything to say in that case. But otherwise, uh, in our industry, what I have seen is initially it might be a bit difficult uh, to have a good pay until and unless it's a really reasonable, good company. Yeah. So uh, don't bother about pay for initial years. That will not help you in the long run. Uh, you will be there, you will get money. Don't worry about that. But it takes a little time. Yeah, so some things about building rules very quickly. I wanted to cover this because somebody had asked me to uh, just mention a few lines. So you can look at national building code and you can look at your own city bylaw. If you're in Bangalore, you look at Bangalore bylaw. You also look at national building code. There are hundreds and thousands of things in that, but to start with, what you need to look is the clauses related to structures. Yeah, who should be a structural engineer? What should be your competence? What you need to do? What were you need to register? Things like that. Yeah, so start looking at it. If you have any confusion on that, you can ask me. I'm not going to elaborately show you about this, or uh, I'm not going to um, uh, explain that right now. That's not my intention, but I'm introducing you to these two things. If you have never seen National Building Code, and if you have never seen your city bylaw, please do that. You can Google, you should get that. Yeah. So this will give you an idea, uh, connect to what's happening in the industry, how you need to submit your drawings, what are the rules, are the, are the rules being adhered to, speak to seniors and understand. If the clause in your bylaw says that a structural engineer should submit a stability certificate, is that being practiced? If not, why? Yeah. So these all will increase your understanding on the process. Uh, it, this will give you an idea on why our profession is underrated. Yeah, these are all related. Yeah, non adherence being unethical, our own people being unethical, all these are related to our pay scale, all these are related to our, our current situation of such structural engineers. It's not something which has come up in one day it is it is it is a accumulation of problems yeah so as a youngster if you start understanding what is there in in building codes what is there in building bylaws yeah why it is not being adhered to why can't i force my seniors to adhere to that why can't i force the architect to adhere to that all these thoughts will give you a um, what do you call a spirit, a right spirit that will help the next generation at least. Yeah, so you have to start looking at these. You have to understand the rules. You have to understand your city bylaws. You have to understand your scope of a structural engineer, things like that. Yeah. Then current trends, smart working. Less about your work, building information modeling is becoming very popular because currently smart working means people can't afford to have revisions, people can't afford to have mistakes, people cannot have about your work. So all these tools, remote working is going to be uh, more in the coming days. So you have to be very much uh, concentrating on all this. Automation, auto detailers, yeah like CSI uh, detailer or RCDC or things like that. You should be an expert in all that. Process for checking. Remote working, what are the essential requirements for remote working? All these are going to be a basic requirement in the coming days. You be a junior or a senior, these are all going to define how you are going to be success. And uh, a very quick, in drawn some sketching tools that might help you yeah online tools for remote working auto to sketch is a free software you can download and start sketching you say if you want to ask me a doubt you can use auto to sketch and sketch up and then send me it's a very quick sketching tool i don't have time to show you this but you can research on your own ms whiteboard is another quick tool that will allow you to sketch uh, if you have a writing pen, a laptop with a writing pen, this will be very fantastic. Otherwise, uh, you might have to use your mouse and sketch it, but still it's good. If you have a touch screen, even then you can do that. Uh, if you uh, want an affordable solution instead of a sketch pen laptop, you can go with Wacom products. Yeah, If you know Wacom, they have a lot of... Uh, uh, 
attachments like boards which can be used for sketching you can connect it like a mouse onto your laptop and then you can sketch on that it will cost you from two thousand to five thousand but the hand-eye coordination will be a little lesser but then if you have a laptop with a pen that's the best if you are remotely working otherwise uh, use these vacuum products or uh, uh, use your mouse and sketch on these tools even mouse will let you sketch but then it will be a little tedious for you to sketch on that if you have a pen you can very well sketch now screen recording and sharing say again for doubt clarifications or if you're working somewhere to communicate to your colleague you can use a tool called loom it's very much useful you can record your screen and then send us a link and people can open up that so doubt clarifications question asking questions asking doubts all this between seniors and juniors or between a trainer and a uh, uh, and a student all this can be really improved if you use this tool you can also uh, make use of your g suite even if you are in a free gmail i hope you know that there are a lot of tools like ppts um, um, word and all that available in under your G Suite. You can use Google Meet, which is a free tool. Zoom, I think most of you are in, I mean, all of us are in Zoom right now, even though it's through a different app. And another tool that I suggest you like a document is Coda. You can explore these tools. All these are really good. There are many more, but these are all very affordable and very much, uh, so most of it is free. So you can use that. Now, current market, I need not tell you that it's really bad, but then best of the best will always have a chance. So if you do whatever I've been telling you, at the first opportunity, if you're able to showcase your ability, then probably market condition might not affect you. But then currently the situation is bad. We are all hoping that in the coming time, it will be at least in another six months, it'll bounce back. So your attempt should be as a beginner, your attempt should be to polish your skills, be ready for that time. Yeah, so hope for the best, but sitting idle now is not going to help in any way. You know, there are many other students who are, or maybe you are also a good student, I don't know. I'm just talking in terms of a person who is not doing anything. So increase your rate of learning. It could be in any way that you want to. It could be by watching webinars, it could be by taking up courses, it could be by uh, watching YouTube whatever but your rate of knowledge and your ability to be independent should increase every day if not there is no meaning in uh, doing anything yeah at the end of a few days you should keep goals and at, at the end of a few days you evaluate yourself from where you have reached have you have you uh, fulfilled the goal that have you reached that goal that you had set for yourself until and unless you do that until and unless you have a measure of your uh, goal then uh, you may probably not progress. Yeah, so kind of opportunities that you can knock. Yeah, conventional consulting firms, of course, that you know, but the kind of conventional consulting jobs are reducing because of the current situation. So what you could explore, you can look at offering maybe free or with a minimal pay. You can look at part-time working for smaller multiple consultants. Yeah. Again, for doing all this, you might have to have some knowledge. Uh, so be there first if you are not, and then offer being a part-timer for multiple consultants. Many companies are also struggling. It's not that only students or young engineers are struggling, even seniors are struggling. So people are looking for optimal cost-effective solutions. So you may be able to help, provided you have a good understanding of their requirement yep then building info modeling will open up a lot of jobs companies from, companies from uh, middle east companies from uh, us are looking for people who can patiently sit and do revit models and all that for them so that is going to increase in the future as a means of cost reduction the outsourcing jobs yeah so you can look at, look at um, uh, websites like, uh, can you mute your mic, whoever is unmute? Okay, so building information modeling, detailing, all these are going to bring in a lot of uh, jobs in that area. 
outsource jobs. You can look at websites like freelancer.com where they will post uh, help in uh, making a Revit model and things like that. Yeah, and there will be a lot of outsourcing firms also emerging up uh, in India where uh, you will be asked to do this kind of work. Bargaining schedule preparations. Don't consider any job in our field as a low level job. So bargaining schedule preparation to the right, right uh, way will be really useful. Yep. Now what is bargaining schedule? If somebody has a uh, doubt on that, you can get back to me. Now many consultants will be looking for inspection services. Say somebody want to have a site inspection. Yeah because people like to travel less. So what if the site is near to you? So find consultants who are having projects nearby you. I mean, what I'm saying is till you find a permanent job, you can do these work and you have learning here as well in inspections. Yeah, you will learn one or the other thing. You will get connected to a consultant. That's a big thing. Yeah, you will probably land a job later there you get an inspection opportunity you understand you learn a lot of things from that you make some money out of it yeah and rest of the time you spend on learning yeah so that's how you can plan your uh, uh, career in this difficult time then architectural firms also hire structural engineers civil engineers yeah don't think that working as a civil engineer doing estimation and uh, uh, helping them out on checking is a bad idea no it's good idea because you are learning you are a beginner anyway so you will learn a lot of things from an architect as well and in inspection and all that you will learn a lot of things which is useful in your structural design life as well so till you get a dream job of your requirement there is nothing wrong if you work in uh, other firms yeah so there are many inspection firms coming up yeah those who um, uh, help uh, customers buy a apartment so nemmadi is such a firm in bangalore house joy is such a firm they they come up with a lot of construction activities build a home is such a one of my students got a job in build a home yeah so they are all uh, construction or inspection firms your role as a structural engineer don't think that you are going to be there and model in etaps and then produce things like that but definitely you will have a coordination experience or some experience that will be useful for your structural life later so plan these work uh, or experience these uh, uh, opportunities and then uh, parallelly build your structural career by doing projects and when the right time comes jump into structures but whatever you learned here is always going to be useful for you later it's not that uh, office based job alone is going to uh, uh, be okay for you detailing outsourcing as i said yeah if you're good at detailing you can help many people including builders many structural engineers maybe out of draftsmen so you can help them and detailing producing detailing and understanding of detailing is a very important uh, uh, phase of your structural engineering life yeah so without knowing detailing you cannot convey your design yeah so there is nothing wrong if you get into detailing yeah now some related uh, lock, uh, current issues architects bill you may be aware of it yeah architects are coming up with rules or changes in their council of architectural uh, architects uh, um, uh, scope of work and things like that so as a young engineers you need to know what architects are trying to do i'm not trying to create a conflict here between architects and structural or civil engineers but you need to know the current trends and current issues in our profession yeah so google architects bill you will get the latest discussions and you will get the latest updates on architects bill if you don't understand you get back to me why i'm rushing is we are out of time i should leave some time for you to ask me something so google architects bill you will understand architects are trying to say that most of the scope that we are enjoying right now is their scope and we have nothing much to do in the planning of the building we should not be allowed to uh, do certain things yeah an architectural company should not be uh, 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 registered until and unless an architect is on board things like that yeah certain things are right certain things are wrong so we need to cut a balance so please google and understand what council of architects are trying to bring in through regulations how it will affect us and as youngsters you should protest the uh, things which are affecting you which you think is ethically your scope we cannot leave that to someone else yeah same way 
we engineers are also trying to pass something called as engineers bill which is lying there in the parliament for long years so what are the struggles what are the things yeah and there are certain bodies which are fighting against uh, the bad rules and all that so understand about them understand what people which people are doing against or for us and then try to participate try to contribute try to understand and be a part of this movement so that our profession has the right uh, value in the right place yeah so you should do this you should I, I, I am short of time that's why I'm not explaining much you can google you will get that yeah so it's a really big issue which is affecting our profession architects bill and engineers bill passing of this and not passing of this yeah so please understand that now certain frequently asked questions and i will finish with this and then leave it to you uh, is mtech mandatory for design many ask me this now if you ask me uh, i will ask you to revisit the building rules in your city and the national building code as per most of the uh, building rules and as per most of the bylaws or uh, the rules BTEC with experience is sufficient for signing stability certificate and designing. MTEC is not mandatory. Yeah, but many firms currently are asking for MTEC because there are a lot of MTEC students. That's the only reason. But that doesn't mean that if you are having only BTEC, you should be worried or you should be uh, not looking at this as a profession, not like that. Many companies consider BTEC also. In my experience, in my training and in my consulting experience and in my work experience, I have seen that those who have done BTEC in a right way, in a right institute, with the right attention, is much better than a very ordinary MTEC. Yeah? So it is not about BTEC or MTEC, it's about how solid you are on your basics. So there will be good M tech students, there will be good B tech students, and there will be bad M tech students, and there will be bad B tech students. So it's a mix of things here. It's not dependent only on if you have M tech or not, that is going to decide if you should be a structural engineer. Yeah, but if you ask me and if you have the opportunity, yes, go ahead and do your M tech. There is nothing wrong in doing M tech, and it will only help you. So, in that manner, in that way, I would suggest if you have the opportunity to do it, either full time or part time. Many part time is not valid. That also you be sure about it. Be very sure the, about the validity if you are doing part time, and then decide if you want to do M tech or not. Yeah, if you already have an M tech, don't think that that is sufficient. You need to have that ability yeah so having mtech is not sufficient and not having mtech is not a deficiency either if you have an opportunity go ahead and do your mtech now should i have sat site experience first now there is no mandatory rule like that that you should have site experience prior to be being a structural engineer but if you have some site experience it's always going to be helpful for you to do your uh, uh, structural professional justice yeah so many students i started off as a structural engineer i have not worked as a site engineer anywhere but i was lucky enough to do all site inspection myself in my first job so i was doing an all in one job my salary was maybe 2000 at that time in 2000 but i didn't care for that i worked in a very small company but i was in charge of my project in all ways i was able to go to site i was able to coordinate with architects i was able to meet mep consultants and understand their requirement so if your job is allowing you to do that then nothing like that you take up your job as a structural engineer now if you got a structural engineering job and in that office you are not getting exposed to site say you are working for an mnc and all their site is in uk yeah you are not getting a experience what is stopping you to go and ask a, a company if you can visit their site you might have friends working as site engineers go with them and visit a site it's not that you should visit only your own site. It's nothing like that. It's all about gaining a, a knowledge, understanding what's being done at site. So create that opportunity for yourself and visit sites. That's all what is needed. It's not that I have to work in site for one full year, then only I understand 
uh, structures, nothing like that. Yeah, in site engineering, there are a lot of things involved like mobilizing people, material, which may not be needed for you because um, if you are being a structural engineer, that skill is not needed. But you need to know how it is being detailed. You need to know how the concreting is done. You need to know how the how formwork is done. What are the site limitations? What are the site conditions? How is it affecting placement of rebars? Because that will give you an idea on what you need to detail. Yeah, then only you will be an overall engineer. But the planning aspects, maybe as a structural engineer, you may not need that. Yeah, so if you devote yourself two years inside and then come back to structures, maybe you have a bit more knowledge which you may not need in this field. Yeah, so you need to balance between that. Now, many ask me, can I shift from site to structures? Yes, very much possible. But the only thing is, uh, if you are 10 years experienced in site, don't expect the same salary when you come back to structures. Now, how can you reduce that difference in salary? Do projects before quitting your side job. Keep on doing structures. Be to that level where you can demonstrate that you have five years of experience in this. And I'm not saying that you say that you have five years of experience. I'm saying that you demonstrate in the interview that you are as good as a five years experienced structural engineer. So if you are able to do that, generally people will consider you. Yeah, so there is no reason that somebody cannot shift from site to structures. You can. These structures easy. Nothing is easy until and unless you are devoting time and you are devoting yourself to that. So everything is as easy as what I said. Yeah, nothing is easy, nothing is difficult. It all depends on what you are planning to do and how you are doing that and your interest in that. Yeah, your dedication is purely dependent on that. Otherwise, structure is easy. It is as complicated as anything else. It's nothing more complicated. What about the consulting fee and industry? Like I told you a few things that you should be doing. So in that process, I want you to uh, talk to consultants. You can even talk to me if you want to know all this. Yeah. What are the problems in our industry? Yeah. Because this will give you a good connect to what's happening. Why your salary is less. Why your salary is more. Why some companies are able to pay you more. All this comes from the consulting practice, the industry situation and things like that. Yeah. So research on all this a bit on your own. Yeah. So that's all what I wanted to tell you. I've been a bit quick. So please, uh, I think we have hardly five, 10 minutes left. So you can ask me questions if you have. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Anything, anybody? Hello? Anyone, any questions? Hello. Hello. You can you have to unmute your mic and then ask me if you Hello. have. Yeah. Hello. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Tell me. Uh, sir, uh, I want to ask like VBA is useful in our industry or not? Excel, the see, pro level of Excel. See, it all depends on, again, as I said, there are tools which allows you uh, 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 say something like ETAPS will allow you to do everything on your own. You will not need uh, Excel sheets or anything much. But then if your firm is using something like that, uh, yes, you may have to uh, have that skill. But it's it not mandatory that, pardon me? Uh, depends on the firm. Depends on the firm. And if, if you are doing on your own, it depends on your interest. Yeah. So some companies uh, use uh, and only analysis they do in ETAPS, they do design manually. Yeah, but these are all meaningless. I think you can use a uh, 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 tool like ETAPS for everything. Yeah, but PB and all that allow you to uh, create your own sheets and do it and check on your own. But mm. that's not really needed because there are products which are really good now, which is not mm. um, uh, comp uh, compromising on design in any way. Only that you need to know how to use ETAPS for design. Okay. And so one more more question, RCDC software, is it useful in detailing our uh, companies using? RCDC is useful for detailing. CSI 
ha also has Hello. a similar product called uh, 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 RC Detailer. Yeah, similar to uh, RCDC. CSI has a product called CSI Detailer. Both are useful, but then as a beginner, you should first know how to detail it manually, how to produce it as a hand sketch. Then right. you need to give parameters. It's not that at one click it will give you everything. Yeah, you need two bar or three bars where it has to be lapped. Yeah, what should be the spacing? All this you need to know. There is no one stop solution where you click a button and you get everything you will get, but that may not be right and that may not be uh, issuable to site. Yeah, so you need to, you can use that uh, RCDC or um, CSI detailer once you are an expert doing hand sketches for the details. Once you know the curtailment length, once you know everything, how to produce a detail, then you can use that and produce details. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask, sir, how do we know that uh, if if it's just a simple G plus three or G plus four projects, uh, then do we need to alter the stiffness constants or not, or it is only required for large uh, mid rise or high rise buildings? You 1893 has the answer for that. For all projects, you have to do that. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, so can you tell us about the association of structural engineers? Like uh, we have an institution of values and uh, we have a civil engineers association. Is there anything like for structural engineers? Dedicated to structural engineers, it again depends on city to city. Uh, in Bangalore, uh, there is an association for consulting engineers. Yeah, that is not entirely structures. There are consulting engineers in that. In Kochi, you have a dedicated uh, uh, association for geotechnical and structures. Uh, Institution of Engineers India is a body for all engineers, which includes electronics, which includes electrical, everything. So civil is only a branch in that. So that's one of the main reason our industry is um, uh, not able to mobilize civil engineers in a manner to what other disciplines are doing. Yeah, so there is a limit or there is a limitation. There are bodies. Yeah, uh, you can contact me later. I will talk to you more about that uh, in a separate discussion. There are bodies, but our association is not uh, really, really uh, well organized and uh, structured. And uh, uh, that's that that's a deficiency we have. But IEI is regarded as most uh, more for engineers. But then it is diluted because there are many other engineers in that. Like civil is only one discipline among that. Thank you, sir. Yep. Anyone else? We might lock out any time because we are, I am having one and a half hours in this. So we are almost uh, reaching the time limit. So quickly ask me. Hello, so let me ask you one question. Were you expecting technical things in this uh, webinar or only these what we discussed because I had wanted this to be uh, in this way, not technical. We will have technical sessions later in uh, coming upcoming webinars. But here I wanted to explain only this. That's the reason I didn't touch upon much technical aspects. Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I wanted a general question. Yeah. Um, many people say that for a beginner uh, going to an MNC company huh. will make you a, in a streamlined position. Like you won't be doing the whole project, but you will be doing a typical, say for uh, detailing only, say for modeling only. So you won't be doing the whole project. And but in a small firm, you will be doing. Maybe it maybe maybe a, the project may be small. But the, you will be doing the um, every aspect of the engineering. Yeah, I, I understand your question, Rahil, and it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. I'm stopping you because we are very limited. We are having a very limited time. Yeah. So I understood your question. Yeah. The thing is, what you said is partially right. Some of the MNCs, they have uh, refurbishment work. They have uh, uh, detailing work. So they might swap you between uh, departments or they might give you a detailing work initially or uh, they might uh, not have work for some time and they put you on training on other things like management or cultural related if you are working for a British based company 
company they may ask you to go for a training on uk cultural related stuff so there will be a mix of things yeah so you it depends on your requirements so if you are thinking that your rate of learning is less in such companies which is partly true in some departments mm-hmm. the same company may have a lot of work in some departments they something like rails in uh, some companies like atkins they may have less work or a kind of re- refurbishment kind of work additional works like a staircase is shifted from here to another location things like that now mm-hmm. i don't say that it's a bad job you are going to learn one or the other thing in that but if you think that it is coming in the way of your aspiration of being a complete building engineer what is stopping you to do another project on your own and ask people there or somewhere else doubts and um, progress so what i'm trying to say is right. that should not be a limitation or that should not be a reason to say no to such a job because the job is such a scarce thing right now so your intention should be to get into a job and being there how you can improve yourself yeah so don't think that okay uh, atkins offered me a job but somebody told me that it's uh, i'm not going to get a whole some experience there so i'm not joining that so it's not that way mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes because in the same company what di- different teams will be in different ways yeah so mm-hmm. i cannot give you a blanket answer for that but generally yes mm-hmm. there will be some uh, rate of learning will be a little less in some departments and in some companies but that's not a global answer yeah so mm-hmm. you can right. correct that yourself okay. and that should not be a reason for deciding uh, not to take up such a work in the current situation mm-hmm. and even in smaller companies try to be in the best in terms of technical uh, things Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question, sir? Uh, sir, is it advisable to uh, learn only uh, one family of software? Like uh, 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 when we uh, when first only we should focus on CSI software, then we should master, and then maybe move to another family, yeah. maybe that of Autodesk or Bentley. yeah see what i am telling you csi uh, because in india currently in indian building sector this is the most sought out software yeah so etabs revit revit is an autodesk product by the way uh, these are the main tools that are used by structural engineers modern companies in india you know, that's why i'm telling you to focus on that now i have seen people focusing on multiple things at the same time and failing say somebody like um, concentrating on rc yeah he may be very partial very his basics are very bad in that and at the same time he wanting to get into steel structures bridges everything simultaneously that is impossible nobody has become uh, uh, versatile in that manner yeah you need to give it a time finish off what you are doing don't lose your focus if you are doing a concrete first thing is bread and butter is your concrete building structures every thing starts from that yeah so later once you are having a decent experience and exposure and a project experience in that then think about bridges or uh, uh, something like different structural systems even yeah if you don't know to design a beam and slab system why are you worried about a flat slab i never know i have repeated questions from some students saying that okay i need to learn flat slab i need to learn uh, uh, say filler slab i need to learn steel i need to know composite first thing is do you know beam and slab system yeah so finish that off understand the basics many places your basics are going to help you if you know how to design an beam and slab system uh, 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 doing a or exploring a flat slab on your own is not a big deal if you know how shell behaves yeah it's very natural or it's very easy for you to tweak that understanding and then design a flat slab if you know how to design a normal building it is not very difficult to design a metro <coughs> yeah so don't try to put your hands in too many things at the same time at a reasonable time you can but then at the same time if you do that you will get confused until and unless you are very very composed person yeah if you are not a very composed organized person the chances are that that you will get lost in between so don't try multiple things at the same time finish off but finish off things at a reasonable pace so that you are not stagnant yeah so finish off your concrete structures your understanding on that your basics and then get into other things same thing with software one at a time is better but 
two different kind of things is fine. Say you are learning ETABs and then Revit parallelly doesn't make a huge uh, difference. And also look at the uh, need of uh, learning multiple software because uh, robot, as I said, nobody in India might be using that. Then why do you learn that? What is the purpose of learning that? Thank you, sir. Thank you. So maybe one quick question we have time for that. Otherwise, we'll get uh, logged out. So we'll finish with one last question if somebody, someone has. And if anyone has any other questions or want more explanation on any of the questions, you can email me or WhatsApp me. Not a problem. I will get back. Hello, to sir. My time. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, right. uh, sure, uh, sir, uh, yes. Uh, what, up, what about to sign a bond as a pressure? Because I get uh, consultant engineers might get scared that if I train an uh, engineer for six months and then he lacks, whatever may be. So then yeah. to sign a bond one year or two years, it is legal or illegal? No, asking for a bond as per most of the uh, relevant uh, rules in the country, it is wrong to ask like that. Yeah. Many consultants okay. don't ask that. And many consultants, a few consultants ask that because of their experience that many youngsters are leaving them very uh, uh, soon. The reason could be the consultant's uh, problem or it could be the student's or the uh, employee's problem it, or it could be both problem, but it might have frequently happened and that's the reason they are doing that. Yeah. So if you ask me, I generally don't do that and I don't advocate doing that and it's not right to do that and legally also it's not right to do that. But if someone asks you, it's solely dependent on you to decide that. And the worst that can happen to you is that when you leave them in the stipulated time, they may not give you the uh, experience certificate and you may have to go behind that and do something about that. But nobody can take you legally or for that. Nobody can say that you didn't do what you said and take you to court. If they take you to court, they only will lose because Supreme Court has an order which says that asking bond is asking slavery. Yeah, so there is no validity for a bond, but you can have difficult situations uh, if you leave, if, if that guy is not willing to give you experience certificate, things like that can become a bit problem for you. And generally don't, if your attitude is good, I think there won't be any problem in uh, leaving even in the stipulate, in, 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 even within that time, nobody will object you as long as you are good. Yeah. And there will be some people who are really, really crazy and don't let you go. Now that somehow you have to do a market research before signing that bond, understand about that consultant, ask people who worked there before uh, research and then decide. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think we'll have to stop here because we are running out of time and we will get knocked off. So anybody else has a valid question can email me. Fine. Thank you. And uh, hope you like the session. Please give me your feedback as an email uh, so that I understand. Be very honest, no problem. I had asked you what you would like to see in the webinar. So only a few replied. And others can ask me if you like technical seminars. Uh, this was not a technical webinar. So if you expect something like that, you please note down what you would like to see in that. Uh, then we can see if I can include that in the next webinar. All right. So thanks for all, all of you for participating in this. I hope you also learned a few things from this. You can get in touch. You can get back to Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank right. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much.